Hi guys! So in this video, I read a couple of books. The first one is Everyone Here is Lying by Sherry Lapina. There is this one girl who went missing. Sounds like your basic domestic thriller, but it's not. And it contains a trope that I really like, so I highly recommend reading this. Second of all, I read Horror Store. This is like an IKEA shop. Well, fictional IKEA, you can say. People are working there and they're wondering like every morning, they wonder why are there some poop on the sofa? Why are there like broken glasses and all that stuff? So they're like, okay, you know what? There's something happening here at night. Let's go check it out. What happens? And such a ride. Also, this book is like really cute. Really full of effort to make look, make it look like a catalog. The Quiet Tenant. This is about a girl. She is held hostage, but I mean, she has been kidnapped. So she's not. She's like considered as basically missing, like a missing girl. She's also a missing girl here. Her serial killer has to move houses, and the way that he has to do that, well, he had to introduce the hostage to his daughter and saying like, oh, you know, she's our new tenant here. <laughs> yeah, and things go down so this is basically a i think this is more of a literary fiction has a lot of commentary very interesting thoughts very tense towards the end i really like this as well gave this 4.5 stars so basically these books they're like five star books essentially and these are all books given to me by my loved ones i also read in this vlog two listen to berries my first listen to berry books the perfect child which is about this young girl who is taken like she is basically a victim of child abuse and she goes into this hospital she meets this doctor who fixes up her bones and then he i mean she gets close to this doctor this doctor is he and his wife they have been wanting to have a kid for a long time they haven't had any luck with their fertility issues and with adoption as well so they decide hey why don't we just adopt this kid i feel so bad for the mom is all i have to say gave that three stars because i did not like the ending if the ending was better maybe four stars and then i read saving noah which is about a teenage boy and this teenage boy he is admittedly a pedophile and how does he manage that how does how does his mom help him get through that like how like their whole family is like broken because of what happened and so how do they do deal with that okay so that was a four star read for me again maybe the subject matter is interesting to me and that is why i gave it a high rating but the writing of the cinderberry is very straightforward has very good mental health rep but the writing is not that great it's not a literary masterpiece okay and then i read oh, i'm thinking of ending things by ian reed incredible i love the writing i love this unreliable story it's not even this it's not even the narrator it's like multiple perspectives well okay you could say it's an unreliable narrator but the whole story the weirdness the unease the darkness that you get from this book something i just really love <laughs> so i gave that five stars and i'm thinking of getting a hard copy of that those are all the books in this video thank you so much for watching good morning happy new year <laughs> okay so this is gonna be my first book that i i'm reading in 2021 i mean 2024 it is everyone here is lying by sherry lapina this is my first sherry lapina book i'm quite excited and okay look at the cover right and look at the tabs that i have prepared for it it sort of matches right what's that surprise from daddy <laughs> gag -gab. oh, for you gag wow. this for you what's that enough what's that it's a happy new year gift from your daddy yay <laughs> Are you happy? <laughs> oh, what's this? What's this? Oh, no. What's this? Oh, no. What's this? Oh, By the way, something really nice. My brother's girlfriend got me this little cute 1989 pouch. We are both Swifties. So she very kindly sent me this via my brother. <laughs> um, and inside, there are very cute Taylor Swift merch. Also, a friendship bracelet in here. Oh, a bookmark. An evermore bookmark. Okay. Oh, and there are some stickers as well at the back. Okay, that's great. Here's the friendship bracelet. It says midnight. 
They ran out of the S, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, ooh, of course, the staple tabs, book tabs. <laughs> and there are also these very cute markers. These are the pastel colored ones, and I'm so excited to try them. I'm so psyched for that. Thank you so much. Jewel is her name. I said thank you to her, of course, in real life. <laughs> oh, wait, I thought this was a sticker. It's actually, I think it's a, oh, it says hand mirror. Cool. Now, it's her birthday on the 20th, and I have no idea what to get her. I have to ask. And then here are the stickers. Oh, I really love this. I'm so excited. I'm gonna go ahead and use this. Oh, I should, I think it should be my goal for this year to find a book or books that encompasses the vibe that Evermore gives because that is my favorite Taylor Swift album. 20% through, so I think I can do an update. Lisa Jewell actually blurbed this book and she said, the most addictive book I've read in ages, and I would have to agree. This is my first Sherry Lapina. I think I've mentioned that. And is this how she writes her thrillers? Because if yes, I've been missing out on so much. I think I should give her other books a try because the way that she writes thrillers is so refreshing. I mean, it's not a literary masterpiece, but at the same time, the way that she tells the story or the narrator, so it's told in third person, the narrator knows what to say, what details to include and what not. It's just right. So I think there is a power in being so succinct, but at the same time painting a picture that is basically what you need so i'm enjoying this book really good let's see if i'm going to be taken off guard this is a missing girl story that is a very common trope and this seems like it's going to be just like every other single missing person's thriller but i think it's not it's not that there's really something special about this this is starting to really get interesting also i don't think i've ever mentioned it but this is in my favorite size it's hardcover size, but it is a paperback. Another thing that I like about this book, at the end of each chapter, there is a development in the story. And I really appreciate that because that means this book is not dragging, y'all. I am in... I'm in it. You know, I am invested in this. The wife, she knows that he has been lying about not being home the day that their daughter disappeared. Burn of the century. <laughs> this one suspect is being held into the interrogation room and he's like why do you believe the witness and why not me why don't you believe me and then the investigator's like the witness is a fine upstanding citizen and you're a known drug offender <laughs> That is why reputation matters. Quick update, I am 200 pages in. Would you say that's like around 60% through? It's not super dramatic in an annoying way, but you really just want to know, like, what happened to this girl? I still have no clue who to believe. There are multiple stories that are saying otherwise. This is good. This is really good. It's not your typical, you know, domestic suburban thriller. Also, an observation that I made, okay? This is very interesting for me to find out, okay? Ready, ready. I'm going to show you a couple of books. The Push by Ashley Audrain gave this five stars. The Love of My Life by Rosie Walsh. Also, oh wait, I, I didn't give this five stars. I gave this four stars at the time, but I think this is a five star book. On hindsight, it's a five star book. But I'm not saying it just because of this video. Okay? And I'm not saying that this is going to be a five star book. Like, I, I'm not sure yet. But I feel like it's for this purpose, I think it's going to be a five star book. But the reason why I showed you that is because all of these books are published by Pamela Dornan books. This one, it says Penguin, like here. In this, maybe this edition is Penguin. But when you look inside the copyright page, it's Pamela Dornan slash Viking. She is the editor that somehow took the, these books in and now I know that this is probably like all of the books that are in being published by this publisher is something that I would like. So I got thinking, oh and obviously The Whispers. I have not read this yet but it's obviously Pamela Dornan books as well. So now I'm thinking like if I check out all of the books, all of the published books under Pamela, Pamela Dornan books, would I possibly have a good reading time? Because I, so far, I've liked everything that that publishing house has ever published. Dude, I have not thought about considering the publisher. So that's my discovery for the day. The twist just happened. Could not have guessed. I don't really do B-roll. Okay, so I was reading a bit. Yes, indeed, I brought my book. 
have found out who the suspect is. But what's not clear... Oh, oh wait a minute. Gab gab. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> the wasabi doesn't look great, but that's because we left it before we went to the grocery, so... But I smell. I smell it. So, it smells so good. <laughs> this is my favorite drink. <laughs> Frutas, fresh juice. It has to be the one that is mixed with the, the milk. I don't really like... I mean, I do drink the regular coconut ones, but this one... This one is so good. Makeup Gabito. I was gone for one hour. Only one hour. About cheese. Surprise! I love you. How about you, Gug Gug? He's eating fries. Did I mention that I used the wonderful tote that Dee gave me? Dee, if you're watching this, um, please read the Song of Achilles this year. <laughs> please, just just do. Yeah. Tote bags are the perfect, you know, containers for these books. And before I was like very sensitive with the corners getting hit like this, I would be so pissed. But now, you know what? I'm living life. Going back to the clip where I was talking about how I know who the suspect is now, but I'm just, I'm baffled. What is the motive? I love it when thrillers do this, this thing. Hmm, it's a five star. This book is a five star. Unless something drastic happens at the end where it really bungles the whole thing. It's January 2nd, people. And I think I'm going to finish this today. Today's the last day where I give myself, you know, time to read. <laughs> Your turn, tickle, tickle, tickle. Gosh, my daughter loves to be tickled. I hate being tickled. Tickle, 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 Okay, so I finished reading Everyone Here is Lying by Shari Lakina, five stars. This contains one of the tropes that I love so much. And of course, I'm not gonna say because it's, it's gonna be a spoiler. But also, the ending, I loved it. It did the same thing as the push wherein it just gives you a final scene and the final scene doesn't isn't exactly the ending. Does that make sense? So the ending is not the ending. Like it's an open-ended ending but it's not open-ended that you 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 think it can go both ways like you know it's going one way and it was the way that i wanted it to end like having open-ended endings i like it when it's going in a particular direction but if it's like open-ended that i don't know exactly what's gonna happen i don't really appreciate that but yes wow this is good great it's all i can say about it it's the perfect crime the perfect crime committed by the perfect suspect <laughs> <laughs> first one that i got is okay i actually so when i was reading everyone is lying i found this copy of the couple next door also by sherry lupina this has been on my radar for a long time but i just haven't had the push to get it but then now i have it it's a secondhand copy got it for 200 pesos i think and it's pretty good pretty clean i mean there's the occasional damage but does it really matter? <laughs> Here are the brand new books that I got. Of course, Notes on an Execution by Tanya Kukavka. And I'm so excited to read this because this is the recommendation from D. One thing I don't like about it though is it's deckled edge. Is that an unpopular opinion? Do people like deckled edge? Because I hate deckled edge. It makes me so annoyed when I see the papers not. This is another recommendation from D. Looking forward to reading this one as well. Very soon because look how thin it is and it's a short story collection. I'm excited for that. And also I got the Luhal Hati Bautista books. We have Desaparecidos. Desaparecidos. Okay, this is about a girl who gets her babies taken from her during... Oh, because she participated in the revolution against Marcos. Then this one, Degata Sedenta, I think this became a movie. Oh no, what the? There's like a freaking rice. Or is that a, a booger? 
This is also about... I know this is also set in the Marvels period. I've read this before. Bata Bata Pano Kaginawa. But I don't remember anymore much of it. I do remember that it has a name of my last name in here. But look why this is annoying me so much. Because, okay, these two, same size. And then Bata Bata Pano Kaginawa. It's like suddenly this size. Like, you see, I cringe. Like... What the heck? It's shorter and it's fatter. Why? Why did you do that, Kimbo? Why? Okay, chores are done. <laughs> Last night, I started Horror Store. This is a book from my brother. Yeah, I forgot to mention. <laughs> Everyone is Lying is from my mom. It's a New Year's gift from her, as can be seen over here. And this one is from my brother. So I think I'm going to be reading, in this vlog, I'm going to just be reading books that I received in New Year's. This is so fun! I'm reading it and basically it's like an Ikea, but it's not Ikea, okay? They're, we're following people who are working in this Ikea and they're, they're wondering why, okay, they are selling a lot of merchandise, okay? The furniture, they're selling well, but somehow the sales are not hitting the targets. And also when they, every time they go like in the morning they find out a lot of trashed furniture so they have a lot of breakages and then some substances aka poop smeared on the couches like there is something going on at night in this orsk orsk is the name of the fictional ikea so it's not the whole orsk just this one particular branch in cuyahoga in ohio and they're like wondering why is this happening to this it's it's a new it's a new branch it's been open for 11 months and somehow there's something strange going on <laughs> Okay, by the way, I love, I love, 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 love the kind of media that is in this book. You wanna see? You wanna see? Look, first of all, it is shaped like it's a, like a catalog, you know? See? And I like how, okay, the bruka is the couch. See page 8, and then when you turn to page 8, it shows the bruka. And then it has these details, like, it shows you a map and what's sold in each of the rooms in the showroom. Like, there's even an order form and all that. It's such a fun book. It's so fun. So this is um, published by Quirk. Oh, and look at the back cover. So grim, right? There is something going on here. And here's how it looks like inside. So it is not magazine paper, thankfully. Um, and there's just this huge margin over here because, you know, it's compensating for the space. And I like how, so they say, they mention a product here, for example, this one, the Dritze. And then it tells, like, later on, they're sitting on the Dritzek sitting cube. So, yeah, I like it. I love it. <laughs> so, I'm currently in chapter 3. As you can see, the writing is great. This is my first Grady Hendrix book. And I think I'm going to be picking up his other books because I like his writing. And could it be that this first reading vlog of the year would be, like, a successful one as well? Because I have a 5 star. Okay, this, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling that this would be a 5 star. Let's see if I find anything that I don't like about it. But so far, I'm I'm heading into it with an open mind. I am 60% through this book. <laughs> and I'm loving it. It's a horror comedy. Grady Hendrix is so funny. I I was like reading this lesson and I'm like giggling to myself trying to cover my mouth because I don't want my husband to wake up and my kids too of course but it's just hilarious the way that it's written <laughs> it's just yeah all I have to say is it's funny and there is some you know there's a story as to why this is happening to this store and they're in the middle of trying to discover it but they're kind of in the thick of it already they don't know the details but what is going on so far so good enjoying the experience friends I have finished horror store last night and I loved it man that ending is so satisfying I can't think of a better ending than that at first I thought there was one ending but thankfully there was an epilogue and the epilogue is so so good. <laughs> I gave this on Goodreads last night with four stars, but I'm think I'm thinking of changing my rating to five stars. I think this is such a unique story told in a very like it's not this book is not lazy. It made the effort to be what it is, so I think it deserves a five stars. Also, I did enjoy reading it. There were parts where when one of the characters was like getting lost, like I realized something about myself. I don't like it when, when I read about characters getting lost. I do not like that. But that did not take away from my overall enjoyment of the book. So that is why I'm still giving this five stars. And last night, last night, hi Gaga. Last night I also started The Quiet Tenant. This is also a book that I got for New Year's from my husband. As you can see, he wrote, he wrote a long, oopsie. 
wrote a long message for me. <laughs> so sweet. Anyway, this is about a man. He's a serial killer, okay? And he is keeping his hostage. His, yeah, not really hostage because he's not getting a ransom. But yeah, she's, he has abducted this girl. He's keeping her in his shed. And then sadly, one day he has to move out of the house because he has to. Problem is, he has a daughter. And when they move, he decides to bring along this girl that he has abducted. Imagine having to tell your daughter that, oh, this new lady is going to stay with us now. <laughs> like, I don't know exactly what excuse he's going to make with his daughter, but obviously the vibe is different from Horror Store. This is written very interestingly. Uh, the, the chapters are short, but they are all in different perspectives. And so far, the perspectives I've read are from the perspectives of women. There was even this one chapter that is narrated by the first woman that he has kidnapped and killed like but the name is just like number one there's that i don't know exactly where's this where this is gonna go but i've heard very good reviews of this book also cover right look at the cover and my chosen tabs for this set there was actually a set that looks very similar to it so i chose that and then i just added a gray and a chrome okay actually i still have chores to do after that i'm gonna go ahead and oh yeah i have to fold the laundry that's the only chores i like I'm, I'm so proud of myself i cleaned the bathroom i did the laundry now i just have to fold the clothes fed the kids Kids, bathe the kids like it's so tough it's so tough being back to you know normal but that's how it is overall great day great start to my day though I did wake up late there are a lot of important womanhood quotes in here topics that should be talked about by women and i think it's very good that it's being discussed in this book and it's really nice how when uh, it's really nice whenever a thriller has something to say and not just simply being a thriller i haven't moved past much i'm just in chapter 10 and that is because i was making progress with my count of monte cristo today so i was feeling like in the mood for it i've been reading this since like last year like i always lose interest and this afternoon I was feeling like I was interested so I I went ahead and picked it up and I did a big amount of damage so I think I am now around 40% through or 46% through this book this is a huge chunker not updated in days I have developed a pimple as you can see but I did get 50% through the quiet tenant and in between that period of time when I wasn't updating I actually also finished another book called the perfect child by Lucinda Berry and that is my first Lucinda Berry book the kid in there absolutely terrifying though there's a reason why she's like that but at the same time like it sort of excuses the behavior but also I feel so bad for the mom she has to really make a lot of sacrifices and a lot of the times i was very empathetic towards the mom and the dad he is worse than the dad from the push that's all i gotta say anyway going back to the quiet tenant this is sort of feeling like i'm not sure if i mentioned it it is more of a literary fiction than it is a thriller the, the hostage the, her point of view is in second person like she is talking about her situation but using you so that sort of terrifies me but at the same time it's a very unique way to set the perspective of the reader like to make it more impactful so i think that's a wise choice overall enjoyable really liking it so far okay, yesterday i finished one book called saving noah by listen to barry and that book is so different from every other book that i've ever read the writing is not that great but the content just so you know lucinda berry used to be a like a therapist or something so she knows how to put proper mental health representation in her books and saving noah is about this teenage boy who he is sickened by himself because he is attracted to young children so he is basically a pedophile the whole book is all about how he tries to okay like it, it's about what happened but it starts from the perspective of the mother and how she is trying to cope and help her son cope as well and how their family has suffered from this entire thing so it's a very short read so i really like that give it four stars yeah better than the perfect child which i gave three stars because the perfect child did not have a good ending in my opinion. okay and last night okay i was really 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 intending to read this book I'm thinking of any things by Ian Reid. I am. I, I was like, okay, I'll read a couple of pages. Okay, I'll get to like maybe uh, five percent of the book. 
And what ended up happening was I finished the entire book and I, I slept at 2 a.m. So, my gosh, that book, it put me in a level of an ease that I am not... Like, I wasn't prepared for it because it was nighttime. It was so creepy. And I got really scared. But, okay, essentially, the, the story is about this girl. She is driving with her boyfriend to his parents' house. So, she is about to meet... Thank you. <laughs> she is about to meet her boyfriend's parents. And she was like, Oh, but actually, you know, I'm thinking of ending things with this guy. So, basically, that's all you need to know. Okay? So, there's that. And then the like the whole thing is is not entirely scary because you don't know what exactly you're scared of um well there, she is receiving some random phone calls that is really just absolutely creepy but yeah the level of quiet disturbance that you get while reading like okay for example there is this one part in the book where our main character she is looking through a hallway right she's looking through the hallway and she sees this is nighttime <laughs> She sees a very tall man sort of like mopping the hallway or something like she can't tell so he was like moving sort of like doing this mopping movement and then suddenly he stops and then she feels as if he is staring at her like she can feel his eyes boring down into her soul so she went down she hid so she's like outside the building so she hid and she stopped looking at the window he was like, yeah, there's that creepy guy. What the heck? And then she, like, after a few moments, she's like, okay, let me take a quick peek again. So she looks up again from the window. And then she sees the guy. He's no longer standing up. Instead, he is on the floor. And it seems like his, his arms are, like, moving on his sides. And his hands are also bobbing up and down. Like, as if he is crawling. Hell no. Hell no. And I was reading it while it was super dark. And I gave that book five stars because the writing is phenomenal. And the level of creepiness, darkness that it has, it is in my wavelength, okay? <laughs> so, with all that being said, I'm still not done with the quiet tenant but i'm super close i'm like 80 percent through it is getting to this part where it's so intense that i'm scared to continue on reading but today i will be finishing this so later on i might give you an update it's so scary i mean not, well, not really scary supernaturally scary but scary that she is going to get caught the main character is gonna get caught doing something she's not supposed to be doing or also there's this part where she saw something that she wasn't even supposed to be seeing as well so obviously her life is even more at stake this time i finished this last night and wow okay this is sort of like a slow burn very exciting literary piece of work like towards the let's say 80 percent when the things are starting to happen and it's so so tense like basically the feelings that it got out of me was like just do it just do it just do it that's that's the feeling that i got when i while i was reading it this is a story that gets you very worked up in a positive way because you do not know what's really going to happen towards the end like um, I wasn't really actively predicting anything that would happen, but the resolution was something that I would I was not expecting. Like, did not even think of that in my wildest dreams. It wasn't that far fetched, uh, and that is because you know I was really into the writing. I was really involved with our main character's thoughts, and somehow a little bit her intricate thoughts about womanhood and all that commentary about. This is like a very feminist book. Okay, so there's like commentaries on that. It feels a bit forced in a way, but it's written really well that I can overlook it. So I'm giving this essentially 4.5 stars, but I think on Goodreads I'll be putting it as five stars. That is the Quiet Tenant, and actually I am so proud of this reading blog because this is like almost a five stars. So essentially. In this reading vlog, I had four five-star reads and this is just the beginning of the year. Alright, so thank you so much for watching and 